at TV5 did get some emails from some parents that were a little bothered by the fact that they felt they didn't know in advance. Can you just address that? Sure. Let me begin by mentioning when I first came to Saginaw, which is not all that long ago, I spoke a lot about my own Catholic education, the importance of Catholic schools and Catholic education, and I had acknowledged the difficulties that Saginaw, as well as other dioceses in Michigan and around the country, were having in terms of Catholic schools. But I pledged that I would give my heart and soul to our Catholic schools and to our Catholic education. So, I mean, would you really believe that the first thing that I would want to do is to close a school or consolidate schools? I mean, believe me, it's the last thing that I would want to do as the new bishop of Saginaw. However, in this circumstance, I did come in midstream to the process. The SAC, Saginaw Area Catholic Schools, has a board. It's an established board that was established before my coming, and they have been working on this issue of these four schools for quite some time. It was my understanding, as I was informed, that even last year, as they came to the end of the school year, they were wondering whether they could open up again this year, filled with hope that perhaps something or somehow they could continue and maybe change the tide of the facts, that they would be able to continue in this year. Early on in the year, they realized that the facts were just too strong, the increasing number of children and so on. It just continued to spiral. So they planned on the need to make this the last academic year, and they worked hard in their process when they spoke to me. You had asked about it being a surprise, and whenever the announcement's made, I know this from my own experience in working in Philadelphia, whenever the announcement comes, it's always a surprise. But I'd have to be honest and say, in just my few months here at Saginaw, that it really is no surprise that our Catholic schools are really facing some grave challenges. We continue to educate children in an area where there are less children, so they're less coming to school. In the state of Michigan, there is absolutely no financial assistance to Catholic schools, which is quite different from even in Pennsylvania, where we have busing and we have textbooks that are shared with the schools. We have AV materials and technology. In Michigan, the church and even the non-Catholic churches, they're all on their own in terms of education and the cost of education. And what it does is it places greater demands on the parents, higher costs, less students, higher costs, and so on. I don't think that's a surprise to everyone. I do appreciate, though, I appreciate on the part of the parents that once that decision is made, because of their love for their schools and their love for their parishes and their identity with the schools and the parishes, it's always a shock. It's always a shock. And so I can appreciate their concern. I appreciate, in a sense, their surprise. But I think they would have to acknowledge as well that they could see over the course of the years how the schools were changing, especially in terms of the numbers of students. And so as I was presented to me in terms of what the board had, the decision of the board had come to, it was clear that they could not go beyond this year for keeping all of the schools open. And I believe that in their heart and soul, they tried to make the best determination, keeping in mind the needs of the children, the resources of the church, and how they could best address the situation. Well, I wouldn't respond in the sense that maybe my predecessor didn't make a decision he should have made. I think all of the bishops, again, my experience back home, 
we, like the parents, hang in as long as we possibly can. Uh, Bishop Carlson, to his credit, has uh, established a lot of financial support from, from people who are uh, very, very generous in trying to maintain as best as we can our schools and, uh, and our school systems. But the reality is that there are just less children to begin with. That's the reality. Public schools are experiencing that. Uh, you know that and have been reporting on that better than I could. It's, it's the reality are there are less children. Consequently, there are less children in our Catholic schools. When there are less kids in the schools, it's higher tuition. Higher tuition forces more people out. And it becomes a spiraling effect. We can try as best we can to build up resources to assist the parents and to subsidize the education as best we can. But even as the church, we're very, very limited. So I wouldn't say that it was, in one sense, I wouldn't say it was uh, overdue in the sense that somebody did not make a right decision. Uh, I do think, though, as you look back and say, yes, this decision could have been made years ago, except for that enthusiasm that we had of trying to do whatever is possible until the very end of maintaining uh, the individual schools. Uh, when, I, when I first spoke about Catholic education and Catholic schools, I did mention uh, of my own school, uh, uh, Catholic school background, but I always use the phrase Catholic education because in the midst of watching some of these schools struggle, the one thing we want to ensure is that we don't lose the whole concept of Catholic education. And so we have to be good stewards, we have to be smart, we have to do whatever it, we can so that we have the ability to offer Catholic education in the various areas of the diocese. And um, so uh, perhaps some of our schools, except for the spirit and the generosity and enthusiasm of so many people, perhaps they would have seen this coming sooner, but uh, we try our best. I don't want to interrupt, but we only have time for about one more question because we've got to okay. get to a meeting. Okay. Okay, for um, St. Helen and St. Peter's and Paul, uh, St. Peter, Peter and Paul, I know that they're closing, and so those yeah, kids are going to go to St. Stephen and St. Thomas. Um, St. Stephen and St. Thomas have a larger enrollment. Is there going to be something in place that can prepare those kids to make that transition? Because those are much larger student populations. I, I believe, and it was, it, it's, a unique, it's a unique experience or concept that, that I didn't understand at first. But I think that's the wisdom behind having this transition take place during the school year. Because during the school year, the children will have the ability, with all of the teachers present and the aides and the full staff that they've all been experiencing from their individual schools, they'll have the ability to adjust as well as they can to the new surroundings, to the new identity, and so on. Uh, when we were discussing this, when the board was presenting this concept to me, I, you know, I've gone through this experience a number of times, and my heart goes out to our parents. I understand where they're coming from. Uh, I certainly don't feel to the, to the extent I'm not a parent. I understand that. But I, I do understand where they're coming from. And so little things that would be important to the children I wanted to ensure would happen during this time. Those students who were from St. Helens and St. Peter and Paul, that they would wear their uniforms, graduate with their own diplomas, things of that sort so that they could maintain their identity. The wisdom of the educators is, is that in this transitional time, the children will gradually come to understand their new identity. Rather than ending in separate schools in June and coming back in September and not knowing anyone, not having had any type of, of transition. Uh, I, I admit, uh, I've not experienced it before, but even anecdotally, once this announcement was made, I've been hearing other educators saying, this is the smart thing to do. So it will not address every emotion and every feeling that everyone's having at this point, but hopefully it will make it the adjustment for the boys and girls uh, smoother and, and better. And it gives us an opportunity then to strengthen their Catholic education, to give them good Catholic teaching, good strong education. And hopefully that, that, that's the way it's going to work. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Good. 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 Are you good? Okay, yeah, all right, good. Okay. Question. I mean, did you want to ask uh, you, you answered have... more questions in three than... <laughs> 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 good. 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 Thanks for this opportunity.